This is Raceway Ministries Today. Thanks for joining us for Raceway Ministries Today. In just a moment, we'll be sharing with you the latest of what's going on in the world of Christian ministry and outreach through the National Fellowship of Raceway Ministries. Well, I would like to welcome everybody to this edition of Raceway Ministries Today. Raceway Ministries Today is our opportunity to provide conversations and through those conversations provide insights for those who are involved in Raceway Ministries. Our podcast is part of what we do with the National Fellowship of Raceway Ministries. And if you need to find out more about the National Fellowship of Raceway Ministries, you can certainly go to our website, racewayministries.org, or you can visit Uh, one of our Facebook pages. We have a Facebook page entitled National Fellowship of Raceway Ministries and then we also have one called Raceway Ministries at the Short Tracks and then we also have added one or two more uh, related to some of the individual Raceway Ministry teams that we have across the country and then we have a Facebook page called NFRM Refuel Conference and we'll be having our next refuel conference in January of 2024 over in Charlotte, North Carolina and we'll be posting information about that upcoming refuel conference on that particular Facebook page. So check all those things out if you need to know more about who we are and what we do. Now, I've got my cup of coffee poured here. My cat, Coconut, is sitting here on the table with me as we do our podcast. And we're going to be visiting today with Larry Bush. Uh, Larry is from up in Michigan, and he does chaplain work at the Berlin Raceway, as well as doing many, many other things in ministry. But we're excited to have Larry Bush with us. Larry has been involved in Raceway Ministries' work up there at Berlin Raceway for a long, long time. But he and Marilyn also have served well with our our National Fellowship of Raceway Ministries work. They've been a part of the board of directors and helped us manage our finances and many, many other things over quite a period of time. And it's a joy today to have Larry Bush join us to give us some of his insights on Raceway Ministries work. So Larry, good morning to you up there in Michigan. Good morning. It's good to hear from you. Yeah. Well, tell me where you are. I think you mentioned to me in our earlier conversation, you're in a church office somewhere. I'm in my office at the Forest Park Covenant Church in Muskegon, Michigan. Yeah. And today it's kind of a slow day because the schools have been closed. We've got an ice and, I guess you're familiar with that, ice and snowstorm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, down here in Texas, it only takes a weather forecast that predicts maybe freezing rain for us to cancel schools and everything. I would guess that you guys up there, it gets a little bit more serious. Well, yeah, we get a foot or so of snow and some good weather and everybody's out and about. Snow doesn't usually bother us but ice does. So today they close the schools. The buses can't run. Well, that's certainly understandable. You know, I've got a four-wheel drive truck, and even four-wheel drive out there on the ice doesn't do a whole lot of good. You know, slush and snow, I can make my way through that, but ice, that's what kills us down here in Texas. So The four-wheel drive lets you go, but you can't stop it. It doesn't do a whole lot of good when it comes to hitting the brakes. Yeah, Yeah. you've got that right. Uh, Well, listen, speaking of ice... I noticed on the Berlin Raceway calendar, you guys have coming up on April the 15th an icebreaker. Looks like you got four different divisions of people that are going to be out there on the 15th of April, and they all hit the track for what's called the icebreaker event there at Berlin Raceway. Now, my question to you is, how many times have you looked at the schedule for Berlin Raceway and said, whoa, the icebreaker event is coming up. It's going to be another year of racing. It's time to get things together. In other words, how long, how many years have you been there at Berlin? We've been at Berlin Raceway now 21 years. This will begin our 22nd. And before that, we had two local dirt tracks that we worked at. But predominantly, we are at Berlin, which is a okay. half-mile asphalt track. Yeah. We start looking at it right about now. The uh, racetrack opens for test and tune 
Cocoon the first Saturday of April and the second Saturday, which are open practices and always subject to change because we still get snow in April and yeah. uh, they will shut them off when it's too cold to race. Okay. Generally, anything under 40 degrees, they'll cancel. But once we get going, the 15th, the icebreaker, and for the first month of the season, okay. all of our races begin in the afternoon. So that means we're at the racetrack at 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they just let us know that our first staff meeting will be held. We'll get to meet all of the new staff members that they've added to the race side of the industry. And uh, new people come in, old people have retired and gone on and so on. And from there, we get our schedule, right? which is for the chaplain, as you well know, if there's a car on the track, they expect the chaplain to be there. And uh, so we look forward to it. We're just gearing up and we say, oh man, we got to get out our heavy jackets because we stand out in the wide open all the time. Okay. And uh, that's how it began. I had some heart trouble and was doing a dirt track north of Muskegon and I couldn't walk up and down the hills. Wow. Uh, the grandstands were set in the side of a hill and so I went to the owner, promoter, and said, hey, I just can't do this anymore. And uh, so we contacted the people at Berlin Raceway, which is, of course, everything, uh, the only hill is the one on the banking of the track down to the infield. Right. So right. it was much better for us and we oh, began yeah. to work there so that's how we are there and we are in planning yeah right now right. well the first of march is right around the corner and won't be long you'll be meeting the new staff there at the speedway and laying down some pretty firm plans to get your season started well you know at 22 years that's a long time to be at one raceway i mean you know since raceway ministries work began or at least since i've been involved in it over the past few years it hadn't been unusual to find some people that have been involved in it for you know five years ten years years, even 20, 22, in some cases longer than that. But by and large, people get in it, they discover that maybe it's for them or they discover it isn't for them. And before you know it, three or four years goes by and they've moved on to something else. So, you know, we run into that kind of transition all the time. All that to say, 22 years, that's a commitment. I mean, that is a firm commitment. And as we talk today, I'm sure you'll be able to share some insights into how you've been able to endure for those 22 years. And I'm sure from your perspective, it's probably gone by pretty fast. Oh, it's gone by so fast. It's hard to believe. Yeah. The biggest thing I notice is uh, the inability to get places quickly. Yes. Because yes. I used to be able to run, now I don't run. <laughs> well, I hear that, yeah. Oh. <laughs> but it comes easier with experience because you can anticipate where you need to be. Exactly, exactly. Well, it's kind of like a racer. You know, the racers on the track, they learn to kind of anticipate they're about to get into something that's going to turn into a caution. So, you know, that just comes with experience, and you've had plenty of experience. So, Well, how did things go in 2022? You know, 2022 has kind of been back to normal. You know, back 2020, 2021, we had pandemic issues and all that sort of thing with COVID, 2022 seems to have been kind of a back-to-normal year. How did it go there in Berlin? Did you have any highlight moments or events, or just give us a thumbnail sketch of how the year went? Well, from the side of the chaplain, it was a tremendous year of ministry. Good, good. And for the track, it was a tremendous year. It is the highest average attendance they have ever had over the course of a season. Really? Awesome. Our grandstands will seat about 12,000 people. Mm -hmm. We generally are about a half to three-quarter fill. Okay. Uh, the racetrack was very, very happy with their season. And, of course, they have three or four special big races with massive payouts. Right. Uh, Battle at Berlin and uh, some of those when the, some of the series come in. Yeah. Uh, this last year, it was SLR racing. Uh, they come in and do all of our tech. And uh, this coming year, we have the Battle at Berlin, the Berlin Money in the Bank, which are huge races. The grandstands will be filled for those. Okay. Okay. Our owner is a believer, and so he is a wonderful man to work for and with. Good, good. And so because we've been there so long, we know the families, they know us, and of course it's every week, so I become really... They're my third church. Yeah. Uh, the privilege the last year, a uh, week after the season closed, we uh, had a kid and his girlfriend that wanted to be married. And through Maryland's ministry at the track and mine, we brought them in for some marriage counseling. Good. We are able to lead them to the Lord and unite them in marriage. Awesome. And to me, that one was one of the highlights, but many others. Yeah. Uh, just Monday, this week, a race family that I met at the dirt track 
27 years ago. He was the first race driver to ask me to pray with him, and his mother passed away. Oh, wow. And we just buried her Monday. The funeral was at our church. It was packed, and of course, <laughs> in the middle of the winter, I'm reuniting with all the drivers of times past and many sure. of the current ones as well. Sure. So it was a highlight year, many opportunities. We were fortunate we had no massive catastrophes in the grandstands or Good. on the track. Uh, we only transported two or three to the hospital, and those were just in and out. So we were very, very excited about what happened in 2022. Yeah. Well, good. Well, you know, what you've just described, I think, underscores one of the important things to understand about Raceway Ministries' work. I consider it to be a missions endeavor, an extension of local church work. But as you described, sometimes it turns into that third church. And the reason for that is you bump into and have the opportunity to get to know people that don't have another church home. And it provides a a great, great opportunity to intersect the lives of people with the gospel. You know, what you just described about the young couple that got married, how awesome is that? To meet up with these people, uh, they ask you to do a wedding, you end up doing marriage counseling with them, end up leading them to the Lord. That changes their whole trajectory in life. And it's because God put you in the right place at the right time at a raceway of all places to be able to intersect these people's lives and lead them to the Lord. Uh, to me, that's exciting, exciting stuff. And that's why we do what we do. Now, you mentioned it being a third church. I'd like to kind of springboard off of that and talk about these two other churches that you're involved with. You are an extremely busy, busy guy, and it's all good stuff. But as you have indicated to me in the past, you're currently serving as uh, part of the pastoral ministry team at two growing churches. Now, just describe to me for a minute those growing churches and what's going on there. You know, we don't have time, probably should take the time, but we don't have time to really talk about all the details of what's happening in those two churches. But kind of give us a brief sketch of what's happening in those churches that keeps you busy. And then I'd like to know what are some of the dynamics that enable you to manage this busy schedule of church, Berlin, Raceway, family, and other activities that you're involved in. So what's going on in the churches and how do you handle all that busyness? Okay, well, thanks for asking. I am the pastor, and when we began Raceway Ministries, I've been a pastor all my adult life, really. But we ended up over on the east side of Muskegon in a church called the Cloverville Bible Church, and now it's been changed to the Black Creek Bible. It's a little more descriptive. Okay. But we began there. I would have been the pastor. It's a very small church. And all of a sudden, they figured out the, the preacher that comes here and preaches every Sunday and visits and does pastoral stuff knew that I was uh, at a racetrack, which was the dirt track. Yeah. And uh, the church began to be filled with uh, racers and ah, their family. Okay. Uh, it started when we'd have a race Sunday at the church, and they'd bring their cars and park them in the parking lot and show them off. And they found out that we're just regular people, church people, yeah, regular yeah. people, and come to find out that racers are just regular people, too. Well, what do you know? So that church began to grow, yeah. and uh, it's a small church, and, and uh, I was able to continue chaplaincy up at, uh, at that time, Winston Motor Speedway. Okay. And uh, then uh, there's a church in town, Forest Park Covenant at church, uh -huh. and they ask if I would come as pastor of congregational care. Okay. Well, I'm old, <laughs> and when yep. you talk congregational care, what they meant, and I still do, is minister largely to seniors. Yes, right. I'm uh, one of four pastors on staff, and they have graciously allowed my ministries to continue. We, we work uh, in, obviously, rest homes, nursing homes, sure, hospitals, sure. home visits, and uh, many times counseling at church and so on. But it's just an extension of the ministry that God laid on our hearts years and years ago when we had nothing to do. All of our kids were at camp. By the way, we have five. Wow. And wow. 22 grandkids wow. and now nine <laughs> great grandkids. My goodness. Wow. <laughs> and, and so it just became an extension. But they were gone and Marilyn and I went to a racetrack and I told her it was a dirt track. And I said, if you don't like it, we'll leave. Yeah. Well, we found out we loved it. Ah. Then we started meeting people from the racetrack. And uh, they're people. And I had to learn a language I'd never heard before. A language of race cars and engines and yeah, yeah. setups and, and so on. Right. And then we watched a NASCAR race. And uh, the chaplain, that I believe it was Tim Griffin, 
and he prayed before the NASCAR race on national television. And I yeah. turned to my wife and I said, I bet they have a website. So through the website, we contacted them. And yes, they do have chaplain and chaplain training. I thought, well, hey, yeah. If, yeah. if these people won't come to church, I'll go to them. Yeah. And that began it. So the ministry actually, and how I discipline myself, I have a very disciplined schedule. I'm at one church uh, two or three hours in the morning. That's the Black Creek Church. And then okay. in the afternoon, I will make two or three hours in the office here at Forest Park. And then uh, the rest of the day of visiting. And sometimes that involves visiting racers who've crashed or have uh, somebody sick in their home. Sure. So the racetrack is just an extension of ministry. That's all it is. Okay. And uh, so that's what we do. Well, I'm very excited that both the Black Creek Church and the Forest Park Church have the vision to see the missions opportunities at the raceway and extend you the privilege and the freedom to be able to pursue that. Not all churches are sympathetic with racing, as you well know, and as we have learned through the years. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, for sure. A lot of churches don't know why in the heck you think you need to be out there at that stupid raceway where everybody's drinking and cussing all the time. Well, because they're drinking and cussing all the time is exactly the reason why we need to be there. And some churches get that, and I'm so thankful for the two congregations that you serve. Now, you mentioned something that I think is key, and that is you said that you manage your schedules pretty carefully. Carefully. Um, nuts and bolts, how do you do that? I mean, do you sit down at the beginning of the week and look at what's going on and just structure your schedule on paper, or do you have it in your head, or how do you structure that? Because I know, based on my own experience, it's really easy to just kind of randomly think, oh, I can handle this, but if you don't do some intense planning, uh, things get out of hand pretty quick. So how do you do that? Well, during the winter, it's rather simple. Yeah. But yeah. during the, the summer months, I know that, like we just said, uh, said earlier it's wednesday today and sunday's coming yep well in this time of year yeah that gives us six days to prepare any messages or bible lessons or teachings that you do right during the summer i make it a goal that throughout my study in the week my messages bible studies are all done by friday morning okay because saturday is shot i'm at a racetrack every saturday and it's not shot because much of what i take uh i i use at the racetrack yeah but sure. i also so the extension of the ministry in the churches, there are three hours of that week that I know I'm teaching a Bible class or a Bible study or whatever. And I am disciplined with my phone. Yeah. I also am uh, disciplined about my office time. Work has to be done. Sure. And so then we start looking at the race schedule now as I'm looking and I know we have a couple of Wednesday races for instance, the SRX series is coming to Berlin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And right. uh, we are excited about that. They have already sold out for that, by the way. Wow. Tw I'm not surprised. 12,000 yeah, seats are gone. And they also have booked on our party decks, of course, a lot of drinking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But the thing we point out to people at churches, we just had a men's breakfast here. I had 60 people. Uh -huh. And our track champion from Berlin came and was our speaker. Mm. He is a young Christian. Well, he's a young adult now, teenager when uh -huh. he started racing. And uh, he came and was our speaker and our church loved him. Awesome. Awesome. So much so that the men's group now is planning an outing at the track for a day. Wow. Wow. So how do I schedule that? It's just in my mind, uh, this is what I have to do. This is when I, the time I have to do it. Yeah. And then, of course, I'm a grandpa, so grandkids call and want to ride. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, fam family always comes first. Oh, yeah. And then uh, yeah. after that. But it's it's not hard. I have calendars on my desk and on my wall. Yeah. Of course, everybody uses electronic calendars. I'm not so much. I'm with you there. You know, I've got a notebook of calendars that's on paper, and I'm still a pencil and pen guy. You know, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, I, I can't do that. I don't carry my laptop, and I, yeah, my yeah. phone is with me, but it's too small to read. So I got you. I, I got you. write it down. I want to underscore something that you said that I think uh, if we have any chaplains listening who maybe are trying to get a handle on how to do effective chaplain work and at the same time be involved in church work and have family time and a marriage to keep up with and maybe even a secular job and you know all those kind of things it requires discipline because if you don't discipline yourself to sit down and block off periods of time 
discipline yourself with your phone time, you know, time that you spend on the screen, you know, cruising through Facebook or whatever, you know, you have to discipline yourself to make these things happen. And I'm going to take your description of this as accurate, Larry, because you've been at this for over 22 years. And I think you know what you're talking about. You know, you've made it work. You're involved in two growing churches. You're effective in your ministry there at Berlin Raceway. And then you have this extended family that you just described with children and grandchildren and now great-grandchildren. Man, you have to have discipline to hold all that together. So I just want our listeners to understand that if you're going to get involved in Raceway Ministries work, it's going to require some discipline. Now, you mentioned family. Um, That kind of takes me into the next thing that I want to cover with you. Uh, You and Marilyn. You guys, uh, y'all have been serving the Lord together for a long time. And I know since I've gotten to know you two over the years in our work with National Fellowship of Raceway Ministries, um, you guys seem to be inseparable. I mean, I, I can remember so many of our annual meetings with NFRM and our board meetings and so forth, uh, even Zoom calls where you're sitting there looking into the computer camera and Maryland's over there in the same room at the same time. You guys just seem to be inseparable in your approach to ministry and I think that's commendable I think it's biblical I think it's the way it ought to be I know that she's been involved there at Berlin Raceway through the years you mentioned earlier that uh, she had been involved with you in creating some premarital counseling for this couple that y'all had met there at the raceway that needed the wedding to be done talk about the value of being a husband and wife team at the raceway what are the high points of that what are the things that necessitate that Uh, maybe a little bit about how does that work well I've been a pastor for 56 years okay wow and uh, my wife has been a pastor's wife for that long yes. and you cannot minister without your spouse amen and so it would be unthinkable of me when we come to the conferences that is part of our vacation okay uh, we're always together yeah one of the things that's so important is that the ministry at the racetrack we are involved uh, yes. during those crisis times or not even crisis just regular ministry week uh, she will be out talking to the women the drivers wives girlfriends family that are in the pits yeah yeah. Uh, she may walk up to the ticket office and talk to the staff in the ticket office. She may uh, be in the concession stand talking to someone. While I know better now that when they first get to the track, leave them alone because they're busy unloading and setting up. Yes, exactly. But in times right. of crisis, probably my wife has been there earlier in the day. Marilyn has been there talking to them. And so we just walk over. What can we do? How can we help you? And uh, I know that she is the better half of this arrangement. (laughs) Uh, I I understand uh, how that works. And and, uh, so she is a very integral part. She goes to all the meetings. She goes to every race, which means we have had thoughts. Maybe we ought to give this up, but I I couldn't do it without her. So what I would tell people that want to begin serving either as a couple or individual, don't commit unless you can commit. Yeah, good. Uh, Good. Because the racetrack, we are a part of them and they expect uh, probably the biggest ability is availability. You're right. You're right. And uh, I get calls almost every week from either the director of race operations or somebody throughout the year saying, did you know so-and-so's mother died? Well, no, I didn't. I didn't even know the mother. But Marilyn does. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the value of a team, knowing their place, committing to them. And I think we have told the track many, many times there are three Saturdays that we cannot be there. I'll have to arrange for someone to pray before the show with the drivers and so on. Right. And and that's part of the commitment. And uh, that's the only way I know how. I I couldn't do this without her, and I wouldn't want to do it without her. That's good stuff, Larry. Just very, very good stuff. And something I think we need to understand. You know, you've heard the old saying before, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. (laughs) Um, And, you know, it kind of applies to Raceway Ministries work. If your wife is not supportive of it, uh, you better not even try it. You've got to have that unity in your marriage. And something you just mentioned, I think, kind of deepens the the understanding for me. You know, it's all about relationships. You mentioned the staff at the Speedway calling you to give you a heads up that somebody had passed away or there was a crisis that needed to be taken care of. And uh, maybe Marilyn already knew about that. To me, what that says is relationships are extremely important. 
and relationships with the Speedway, of course, are very important for that very reason. They can feel free and feel comfortable calling you up and getting you involved in a crisis that's going on in somebody's life. But your wife can actually multiply the opportunities that come through those relationships because she, like you described with Marilyn, she's relating to people out there that maybe you don't even see during a weekend at the concession stand or whatever. And so those are relationships that are being established as well that can result in more ministry opportunities. So it's just a win-win all the way around when you have a husband-wife team involved there at the raceway. And I just commend you and Marilyn for your faithful to that, for your unified thinking in that. Uh, I mean, you guys have been just inseparable through the years, and it bleeds over not only from your marriage, but right into your ministry there at the Speedway, and that's the way it ought to be. So thank you. Thank you for who you all are and what you do, and thank you for that great description of how that works. Now, you and Marilyn, you mentioned y'all have been serving for 56 years as pastor and wife. 56 years. Man, that is a <laughs> long time. You know, I've been involved in ministry since, uh, oh, I guess about 1974 is when I first uh, got involved in ministry. So, you know, the decades click by and, you know, time passes faster than we want it to, I think. But to me, that says to you and it says to me, we're not spring chickens anymore. So I wanted to ask you, what have you discovered to be some of the secrets to persevering with your chaplain work at your age? <laughs> Well, <laughs> people will ask me all the time when I get back to church on Sunday morning, usually dead tired, yeah, and yeah. they'll say, well, how are the races? Yeah. And I said, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I have not seen a race from start to finish in 20 years. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. We're busy. We stay busy with communicating. And how at our age? Well, you don't run anymore. You walk. Yes. Yes. You learn to anticipate where perhaps there may be some issues that the chaplain has to travel. Right. I remember when we first got there, Berlin had a terrible reputation of fights in the pits, and so much so that the sheriff department patrolled the pits on horseback. Oh, man. Wow. And uh, I got there, and when I would anticipate, and it, it's not me, it's the leading of the Spirit, of course, yeah. but I would uh, head over where I knew the drivers were pitted, I knew what they were like, I'd walk over, and if they were about to duke it out, I'd just walk up and i oh, God, gone the preachers here, I gotta quit. Yeah, yeah, right. And now, we no longer have sheriff patrols. The atmosphere has changed. The first owner that we worked for was surprised, so much so that they had a skirmish in the grandstands and they red flagged the race to call Larry and get him ah, over to the fight in the stands. Call the preacher, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it worked. Well, good. So it's not because I'm a big guy, because I'm not. Yeah. But I tell you what, the Holy Spirit, if you follow him, he, we anticipate where the difficulty might be. Yeah. Uh, for me, the hardest part of ministry at the track is in the tech barn. Okay, yeah. Pre-race, because that's where where most of the tension between the drivers and teams and the staff are. Yeah, right. And uh, as a result, over the years, our ministry has taken a different turn. At one time, we had children's ministries out in the grandstands sure. and all that. But the ministry has changed that we have as big a ministry with our staff as we do the uh, racers themselves. In fact, once a month, there are eight or nine of our staff members that we, we call it the family. We go out for dinner. Yep. So we've built relationships with them, but how we do it? Slowly. Yes, <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. Slowly. Slowly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And of course, you have to take care of your body. At the end of a Saturday, uh, for us, 26, 27 times this year that we'll be at the racetrack, you just have to keep yourself fit. Yeah, you do. And uh, eat right and sleep right when you can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the only way. We're not spring chickens, and so I don't run much, if at all. Yeah. And uh, we walk, and they see us coming, and sometimes they'll come to us, sometimes they avoid us. Yep. Right. And that's good, too, yeah. because it stopped whatever was about to happen. Sure. So. Well, that's great advice. I know this doesn't ring a bell with a lot of our younger listeners. You know, they're probably in their 20s, 30s, 40s, maybe even 50s and 60s, and they still sprint and run to the pit area, or, you know, when there's a crisis, they're hoofing it down pit road to get to where they need to be. You know, just to forewarn those people, if you want to do this for a long time, you need to take care of yourself. You need to make sure you stay in touch with your doctor and monitor your cardiac and 
you know, all that kind of thing, staying in shape physically. You know, one of the hardest things for me nowadays is going up and down stairs. You know, and if I'm going up and down aluminum bleachers, for example, that's one thing. But if it's hard concrete steps, man, that works on my knees. And what I've had to do, I remember several years ago, I actually went to a physical therapist and I said, look, my knees are killing me. What do I need to do? I don't want to have knee replacement surgery. He gave me some exercises to do at home. And I can guarantee you right now, if I don't do those exercises and stretches at home on a faithful basis, it gets hard for me to go up and down stairways. But if I continue to do those things, you know, at 71, I'm still able to go up and down the bleachers and so forth uh, pretty good. You know, but you got to work at it. You know, you can't let it go. It's kind of like you said about the other issues. Discipline is very, very important when it comes to that. So thank you for sharing those insights very candidly, Larry. I didn't want to put you on the spot, and I'm not going to ask you to tell us how old you are, okay? You aren't or you are? <laughs> I, if you want to disclose that, that's great. That might be yeah, a great oh, idea. Not, not a big deal. I'll be 77 here. 77, man. And, and, uh, wow. So it's not a big deal. Age is just a number. Yeah, well, you're right. But I guess the, one of the big things, the, the reason we do and are able to do it is because we know that God called us to it. Yeah. And it's a commitment. Yep. And both of us had to have that commitment. Yep. And part of it was 30 years ago when we started race ministry, we looked at each other and says, well, our kids are going to be grown. Yep. And when the house is empty, what are we going to do? Yeah. Yeah. And we just looked to the Lord and said, Lord, what do you want us to do? So as we now enter into the retirement years, we're not retired, but yep. this is something that her and I made a commitment to do together. Mm -hmm. And every year we ask ourselves, do we want to do this again? Sure. So it's part of the commitment, not only to each other, but to our calling that yeah. God gave us. And the second is commitment to the racetrack yep. people. Yep. And they know we're committed and uh, they, they kind of assume that. Mm -hmm. In fact, we just had our annual banquet, the Berlin Awards Banquet, where they give out hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah, to right, people. Right. I got the privilege of sitting right across from Eric Jones at the banquet. Oh, cool. Yeah. NASCAR. Yeah. Mark Martin was there. And awesome. I got to meet him and talk with him. And we had a number of other NASCAR people there with us because we are one of the largest average attendants of all of the NASCAR tracks in the country. Wow. Wow. And so we're pretty honored. Yeah. And uh, we had two champions down from our track that won the NASCAR weekly series championships cool and so they depend on us they'll call us but it's all not because we're any better at doing anything it's because we've been there and everybody knows us yeah yeah uh, well i gotta quit talking that way here comes the preacher uh, yep <laughs> Well, listen, Larry, that is such good stuff. And I often tell people, and, you know, we're talking about aging. I often tell people, do as much as you can for as long as you can. And I've discovered that one of the things that gets me out of bed every day is knowing that I do have a purpose, I do have a calling, and I do have a responsibility to people who are depending upon me. And so when you put all that together and you maintain your physical health, you can go for a long time. And so at the age of 77, man, my hat is off to you for continuing to do all that you do with your church work, your family, stuff at the raceway. I hope I'm doing that when I'm 77. My hope and my dream is that I can keep going like you are. Now, we have some new chaplains that are going to be stepping into the role of serving a chaplain at a short track this year. As we uh, get ready to wind down in our conversation here, what are some tips, uh, pieces of advice, what is some counsel that you might share with them as they anticipate getting started at their speedway? Well, it starts with relationships. Mm -hmm. And I would say, first of all, get to know the owner. Make it a point to be his friend. Yeah. Get yeah. to know the director of race operations mm -hmm. and what are their expectations of you. And you let them know what value you have to them. Good. That's the first thing. And the second is the, the, the racetrack. We are there as their guests. Yes. And there are limits, yes. places you can go, places you can't go. When we began ministry, we asked them, could we come? And they said, what do you want? And we said, nothing. Yeah. And I asked, the man was Bert Gregor, the owner of the track. I said, all I want is access. Mm -hmm. I'll stay out of your way. I'll do anything you ask me to do. And so once they know you're going to be there and they will depend on you, they start giving you stuff and places to go and people to meet that you never thought. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. If anyone wants a successful ministry at a racetrack, you have to be friends with the director of race operations and the promoter and or owner. Boy, yeah. Those are the two keys. We meet annually. My wife and I call the owner at Berlin and say, hey, let's go out to dinner. Mm -hmm. And this one's on us. We pay for their dinner. Yeah. Even though they're multimillionaires, we pay. Yeah, sure. And it's important they know we're there for them. Yeah. I want that track to succeed. Yeah. I think those are the two biggest things. Mm -hmm. And then uh, not to over, uh, this sounds terrible from an evangelistic guy, but not to over evangelize. Okay. You're there to present Christ with a life that is worth living. Yeah. And they will come. Yeah. The most important relationships we have are with staff members, uh, critical staff members. The flag man who takes more heat than anybody else in the whole racetrack world yeah. uh, at local tracks. Get to be his friend. Yes. Uh, because you're going to have to defend him. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. At a local track, anyway, that's one of the, the key persons. Get to know the safety team, the first responders. Yes. What do they expect out of a chaplain? Right. Because usually we would be in the way. Yes. And uh, the thing to do is to stay out of the way and keep other people out of the way from letting them do their work. Right. And uh, so th that's the advice. And, of course, you better be prayed up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, they come to the track has expected now that I do my prayer walk, which I walk every inch of that stupid racetrack. Yep. Yep. Every week I, into the grandstands and uh, in, on the concourse and walk the track itself, especially those danger points where you seem to have a lot of wreck. Yes. And they expect it. If I don't do it, somebody say, hey, preach, you didn't make your walk today. Yeah. What's the matter with you? Yeah. Well, that's a long walk. But those are the uh, biggest helps that, that I think I learned from from you. Uh, also, our very first and only training we ever went to was the Motor Racing Outreach Chaplain's Training yes. back in 1986, I think. Yeah. And it was at Kansas City. Okay. I'll never forget it. Yeah. And they mentioned those three things, and those are the three things that have stuck with me over the years and are spot on. Yeah. Uh, we are their guests. Those things are right on target. And you know, I always have a lot of respect for the guys with MRO. They've been doing it for a long time. And Max Helton launched that ministry and did a very, very effective job of getting to know the racing community and how to interact with them in an effective way. And so they always have some good, good training and good, good points. And the things that you have carried along through the years from what you learned there and still apply at the raceway. Very, very, very effective. I love what you've described. Uh, you're right on target, Larry. Man, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate you and your long-term commitment to the Lord and the relationship that you and Marilyn have as a team, husband and wife team, uh, serve in churches and extend from the church work out into the raceway. Uh, very, very effective. So, man, thank you so much for what you do. Any other word that you would share? Any other closing comments that you might have, Larry? No, not much. I just I want to thank you for the opportunity. Sure. Ministry never stops. Yeah. I try to dress appropriately wherever I am because I'm a pastor. 24 7 yeah right and i'm a chaplain 24 7 yeah. and my racers i call them my racers the participants in the race world they expect something they don't expect to see me coming out of a bar they don't expect to see me yep. uh, a slob and swearing and there's an expectation and i think every christian is a minister yep, yep. Uh, that's our calling as pastors and chaplains to develop those who believe into builders and workers for christ Amen. and uh, Amen. that's my goal and i believe it's biblical and uh, i my hats off to those who would start first time at a, a racetrack a chaplain at a local track loses his summer yes and we've looked we'd love to replace ourselves with someone that uh, is called and they come and oh i love this i love this and then you say well you realize now you don't get a weekend off for the next 26 <laughs> weeks yeah and that separates the men from the boys yes, it does. Uh, yes. So if you know somebody that lives in northern part of the country and would like to commit for 26 weeks, uh, have them call me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm looking here at your Berlin Raceway schedule. And uh, from April 15th to September 9th, you guys are going to be busy. And then after that, all the end-of-the-year stuff and then all the off-season stuff. Man, what a commitment. 
Uh, so anybody out there that uh, might be listening to this podcast who is up in the northern Michigan area, if this sounds like it's for you, get in touch with Larry Bush. Speaking of that, how can people get in touch with you, Larry? Well, my uh, email address is uh, typical of a racer. It's LB, my initials. Okay. Rapid Rev. LB, LB Rapid Rev. At Yahoo. Okay. And that's the easiest way to get a hold of me, yahoo.com. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you for your time, Larry. I really enjoyed catching up with you today, and I think all the things that you've shared are going to be very valuable for those who might be listening to our podcast today. Uh, So be sure and tell Marilyn I said howdy, and greet all those kids and grandkids and great-grandkids in our behalf, would you? I will. In fact, following this, I have to go pick her up Good. So and take one of them ah. to lunch because nobody's home to fix her lunch today. Oh, so. my goodness. Okay. Well, thank you, Roger. Yeah, you bet. For those who are listening to our podcast today, this is Raceway Ministries Today. It's a podcast platform for the National Fellowship of Raceway Ministries. And we've been visiting with Larry Bush. Larry is chaplain up at Berlin Raceway there in Michigan. Been at it for 22 years at that particular track and has lots of wisdom and insights that he has gained from the experiences that God has given him there. So we want to thank Larry for being on the podcast today and want to thank all you who are listening again. Again, if you need to know more information about the National Fellowship of Raceway Ministries, best thing to do is just go to our website, racewayministries.org, and you can find out everything you need to know there. Until next time, we pray that God will walk right side by side with you as you go through the road course of life. And if you haven't trusted Jesus to be your Savior up until this point, now would be a great time to do that because God promises he'll never leave you, never forsake you. He'll walk with you through the raceway of life all the way. Until next time, we'll look forward to talking to you soon. We hope you'll tune in next time as we continue to explore Christian ministry and outreach in motorsports through the National Fellowship of Raceway Ministries. If you'd like to learn more about the National Fellowship of Raceway Ministries, visit our website at racewayministries.org. Follow us on Facebook under the name National Fellowship of Raceway Ministries. Check out our podcast and videos found on our National Fellowship of Raceway Ministries YouTube channel. Meanwhile, thanks for joining us for this presentation of Raceway Ministries Today.